Hi right there, so in this video I'm going to take a quick look through program menus just to explore some of the software available on the Raspberry Pi. If you're wanting to look for additional help to get started, the help menu is obviously a good place to go. And from the get started link, this will open up a web page. And in this web page, you'll find that the guide that it links to is also available in a printer friendly version. There's more detailed help and also links to things like the Magpie magazine and Debian is the particular version of the Linux operating system that Raspberry Pi Raspbian is built on and so there's much more detailed reference information there that I think most users won't really need. We have a lot of applications and I'm going to spend future videos looking at these in more detail. There's a lot of different programming tools built in to Raspbian if you have Raspbian with all the recommended software installed. If you have gone for the bare bones Raspbian without the recommended software, you'll find the links to open those are available through the recommended software package that is from the main menu. So that's just processing as it looks up and checks what all the recommended software is. Because this is Raspbian with recommended software that we already have all of these, but it may be the case that there are some that are not included, but it looks like we've got almost everything. Though there's a couple of extras, there's a screen reader app. Other than that, it looks like all of the recommended packages are already installed. But that's a useful link if you are starting from the more bare bones version of Raspbian. There's also a separate add remove software that gives you access to hundreds if not thousands of additional software packages that are available for Raspbian. We'll maybe look at that in a later video. Programming wise as I say we've got quite a range of things. Under education we've got SmartSum. This is actually for sort of modelling digital electronic circuits. LibreOffice which is kind of like a Microsoft Office replacement package. And it opens quite quickly. That's quite nice to see. Right, there we go, that's better. I have already created a file and saved it so we can open a docx file. And there it is. So this is a word processor and you can see we can do all the things we would normally be able to do with a word processor. User interface looks a little bit dated but it's quite quick and responsive on the Raspberry Pi 4 which is nice to see. By default it doesn't use the same file formats as Microsoft Office does but it will save to docx and the Office formats and it will open the Office documents and you can change the default to, to make it save as Office. We have our internet browser and also an email app, a media player for playing video files, VLC has support for a very wide range of media file formats. This is going to be an issue if we're going to be using our Raspberry Pi for game development. We have an image viewer but no, don't have an image editor by default so we're definitely going to need some additional apps there so we'll explore that later. Games wise we have a special version of Minecraft that's been created for Raspberry Pi and it's an educational version that hooks into Python so you can actually control it through code. We have a typical range of accessories including a very useful PDF viewer and also edits basic text documents. The terminal window is available through the menu or from our taskbar here at the top. Gives us access to this console window where we can type commands, for example, to potentially update the Raspberry Pi. Some software that we might need to install might need to be through the console. And I think that's enough for a quick tour just now. We will have some slightly more detailed videos looking at some of the different categories to follow up. Thank you.